Hi everybody, welcome back. It's nice to have you back. Um, today we're going to do some more learning together at Pajama School. So uh, I'll show you the little timetable we've got set up for today. It's the same that we've been doing so far. Hope you enjoyed making your animal habitats yesterday. So when you're ready, shall we get started? We're going to start with our stretch and warm up. Then we're going to do some phonics. Then we've got maths, English and topics. So this is what our day is going to look like today. Find a space and let's stretch up as tall as you can, stretch out, spin to the left, spin to the right and shrug your shoulders as high as you can and let them drop and again let them drop. Let's do a big deep breath through your nose. One more. Okay, for our big jumpy warm up today, we're gonna pretend we're on the ski slopes. Now, I know somebody in my class have, has been skiing. I loved that video you sent me a little while ago. Um, so we're going to do some ski jumps, which is where you jump and pretend you've got the skis in your hands. So we're gonna jump from side to side like this. Jump, jump and ski, bend your knees as well. We're going skiing. It's not really the weather for it, but that's okay. Let's do five more, five, four, Three, two, one, and shake it all out. Let's get ready to learn. So let's go through our sounds uh, for phonics today. I'm not gonna tell you these ones, so just have a go on your own. Oops. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to show you these tricky words as well from last week that we learnt. So see if you can remember how to sound these ones out. Some. Friend. Today. Well done if you got those. Before we do our secret word, let's go through these sounds that we've already covered. We've got ow, uh, uh, air. Eh. Ah, or, your, and ow. And our three tricky words are said, school, and was. Well done. Secret word today, are you ready? Can you sound this out? P out spells. Pout. It means when you have a bit of a, maybe you stick out your bottom lip and you have a bit of a pout like this. I want that. It's not fair. You might fold your arms like that. It's a funny picture. Okay, so today's sound, we're going to do this one, I, G and H, making the I sound. It's a trigraph, one, two, three, just like air and your. They've got three letters too, making a sound. So I, the way we remember this is fly high. So what I'm gonna do today, and you can do it too if you want, is I'm gonna make a superhero out of Play-Doh and I'm gonna make my superhero fly high. So hang on one minute, I'll be right back. <laughs> this is the floppiest superhero you'll probably ever see. I've made it so it's arms sticking up and it can fly high. So make your superhero fly high through the sky. Do, 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 do. And then let's try and write those words on here. Say bye to your superhero. Bye bye, I'm going to fly high. I've written some words underneath our I sound. So let's sound them out together. I spells hi. N I t spells Night. L, oops. L, I, t spells light. F, r, i, t. Fr, i, t. Fr, i, t. Fright. So that's a word that we say. If, if somebody scares you, you can say, oh, you gave me a fright. 
you frightened me. So we've got high, night, light and fright. I'm going to point to one of these words in a, in a random order and can you tell me what it says? <laughs> Tried to trick you then. Well done. Okay, so underneath here, I'm going to cover these words now and I'm going to ask you to write me some words. Can you write the word light? L-I-T. Light. L-I-T. Light. Can you write the word fright now? Fright. Fright. Can you write the word hi? I. I. Light. Fright. Hi. And last but not least, can you write the word night? N -I -T, night. Okay, I'm going to move my hand in a moment. You can check if you've got them right. Oh, that's another one. Right. I'll just write that on it. Right. R I T. Right. Okie dokie, we're going to play a quick game of buried treasure now. So you you can draw this, but you don't need to. You can just use mine together if you want to. So I've got my trash here. That's for fake words. And then I'm going to try and draw a treasure chest if I can. Aha, here be buried treasure, me hearties. <laughs> so we've got treasure chest there and trash there. If the word is real we'll put it in the treasure chest. If it's fake or alien, we'll put it in the bin. So what about this word? S I sigh. Real or fake? What do you think? If you've said treasure chest, you are correct. Sigh means when you kind of go like this, <sighs> like that. So you breathe out some air and it's usually when you feel relieved. So you're glad about something. Okay, so sigh goes in the treasure chest. The next word we're going to look at is this one. Fike. 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 Hmm. Real or fake? What do we think? Well done if you said fake. Fike isn't a word, is it? Next one. B -r -i. Bright, bright, bright. Is it real or fake? Well done if you said treasure chest or real. It is bright as were. The light was very bright. What about this one? Ch, I, chai, chai. Hmm, real or fake? Chai. It sounds a bit like try, but it's not. It's chai. I'm going to put that one in the bin. And last but not least, I, high, high in the sky. Okay, that one is real. Well done, guys. If you want to challenge yourself, you could try and use some of these words in a sentence, or you could make your own game of trash and treasure by writing down some real words and some alien words with the I sound and testing somebody in your, in your family. Yesterday in maths, we learnt about how to solve subtraction, that means take away minus, subtract, subtraction word problems. Today, we're going to look at solving some multiplication problems. So I'm going to write here, can I solve multiplication problems? So multiplication is things like multiply. So it means when there's more than one group of something. And you might have heard the word array that we use a lot in school when we talk about this one. The symbol, whoops, looks like an X like that. So you can make it with your arms, an X. That's a funny one, actually. Choo -choo. And that means multiply. You might have heard it called lots of as well. 
lots of multiply array Arrays are what we use to solve these kinds of questions. So I'm going to show you an example of what I mean by this. Here we've got a calculation. The way I'm going to read it is like this. Three lots of two equals something. We're looking for lots of two. This is one lot of two. Can you see we've got one, two? That's what I would call a lot of two or a group of two. So I'm going to put one lot of two underneath here. I don't just want one lot of two though. How many do I want? Three. So I've got one lot of two, another lot of two, so that means two lots of two. And I just need one more to make three lots of two, so I'll put that on there. Can you see? Oops, my blue text just disappeared. I'll put that one on. So I've got three lots of two on here now. Nearly, anyway. <laughs> There we go, three lots of two. So when I add these lots of two all together, we've got one lot of two, two lots of two, three lots of two. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. The answer to that question is six. Now I made these on little bits of paper, but of course you can just draw them like this. So there's one lot of two, two lots of two, three lots of two. Let's try another one together. Underneath here, I'm going to write, uh, two lots of five so this time we're not doing lots of two like that one was oops he's jumped off we're not doing lots of two we're actually doing lots of five can you see that there i need two lots of five so instead of making them like this i'm going to draw them so can you count to five with me and we'll make one lot of five together one two three four five so that is what we call one lot of five. We need two of them. So I'm going to draw another lot of five. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five add five there, haven't we? Because we've got two lots of five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done if you came up with the answer ten. If you know your five times tables, this is a lot quicker because you can just go two lots of five. So I know that it goes five, ten. So you can do it in your head. You can know five lots of five because you can go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. You can know six lots of ten, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. That's six lots of five because we're counting in fives. So there are different ways to do it. This is the more practical way where you're counting and drawing. But if you can count in twos and fives, you can solve that more easily. We'll try one more together. This time I'm going to do three lots of five. See what that equals. So you can either count in your head now in fives or draw them out like me. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we need a third lot of five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so count these ones up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Or you could say, hey, I'm looking for three lots of fives. So I'm going to get three lots ready and I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, counting my head. You can do that one too. Your challenge is on this page now. This is the easier but still tricky questions. We've got two lots of two, four lots of two, five lots of two, six lots of two, seven lots of two and eight lots of two. This next one is a bit harder. We've got nine lots of two, five, five lots of five. Sometimes you say five times five, seven times five, four times three, six times three, six times four, or six lots of four. And then this mega challenge, what calculations could this picture show? So see how many different things you can think of. What could that show? Don't just think about multiplying. Maybe you could do an add number sentence or a divide one. Really challenge yourself with this picture, okay? So I'm going to mark through the answers now. I'll just get my pen ready wherever I put it. Where are you, little pen? Oh, I'll just use a pencil instead, actually. So, two, lots of two, four. Whoops, give yourself a tick if you've got four. Four, lots of two, eight. Five, lots of two, ten. Whoops. Six lots of two, 12. Seven lots of two, 14. Eight lots of two, 16. Well done. Nine lots of two, 18. Five lots of five, 25. Seven lots of five, 35. Four lots of three, three, six, nine, 12. 
6 lots of 3, 18. 6 lots of 4, 24. Well done if you've solved those ones. Now the tricky one at the bottom, the calculations you, you could say is we've got 2 lots of 5 there. So 2 lots of 5. We've also got 5 lots of 2 if you look the other way. You could say we've got 2, add 2, add 2, add 2, add 2. 2, add 2, add 2, add 2, add 2. Or you could say we've got 5, add 5. You could also say we've got 10 split into 2s, which is called 10 divided by 2. This is a bit mega, so don't worry if you haven't thought of that one. 10 divided by 5, you could say as well. Let me know if you thought of anything else. Or you could say 1 add 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 1. Or 3 add 2 add 3 add 2. As many different ways as you can think of. You could even carry on with that now. So for English today, we're going to start writing our story. So our objective is, can I write a story? Can I write a story? So our story, because it's a fairy tale, we're going to start it with one upon a time. I'm going to use all of my things to help me. So my story map, my uh, monster description, my new goodies. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got my writing rules. So I've got capital letters, full stops, finger spaces, and check that it makes sense. That means thinking through what you're going to write before you write it and then reading it back afterwards. So everybody's writing should have these four things. I'm going to start with once upon a time, or remember that spelling, once. Once or p on. Once, finger space, upon, finger space, a. Remember to do our lovely handwriting with practice, finger space. Time to split eye with an M splitting it up. Once upon a time, there the air were three th er, e silly lemurs. Full stop going to read it back to check it makes sense. Once upon a time, there were three silly lemurs, full stop. Have I got capital letter? Yep. Full stop? Yep. Finger space? Yep. And it makes sense. So fantastic. That would be a really good start. I'm going to say one lemur with my capital R. One lemur was tiny, comma, because I'm doing a list. One was medium sized, medium, that's how you spell it, medium sized, and one was, don't forget the spelling of the word was is was, that's what we're learning this week, one was huge, exclamation mark. Once upon a time, there were three silly lemurs, full stop. One lemur was tiny, comma, one was medium sized, and one was huge. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to describe where they live. So see if you can find this page in your book, the one with the setting description, with the picture and the sentences. So I'm going to say, they lived... I'm going to see this one because it'll help me write it. In a jungle with tall towering trees. I told you this would really help us later. They lived in a jungle with tall, comma, because it's a two-way sentence, towering trees. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to describe the setting and then you need to tell me about the first animal. So in this one it's a goat, but in my story it's lemurs. The first little animal crossing the bridge and meeting the big monster. I think just writing up to that point today will definitely be enough. We can carry on tomorrow. So try and write all the way up to where they meet the monster for the first time.
and then don't forget to check these things back at the end. If you want a mega challenge, remember those little writing tricks we can do. You can have adjectives, so I'll put at, d, j, and you can even have ly words like luckily, quickly, unfortunately. Really looking forward to hearing about your stories and I bet um, Minnie the house fright will love to hear them too. Our topic today, I'm going to include in the video some really nice pictures that I saw on Twitter that somebody had shared uh, from a local school. Um, they've been making some signs of spring name boards. So that means they've gone into the garden or outside on their daily walk to collect some things from nature that signify spring. So when it starts to become the season of spring, we see things like birds' nests and uh, new plants growing, daffodils, daisies, maybe some seeds or um, some soil. So have a look at what you can see outside. It's different to winter because winter might have had snow or bare trees. You'll start to see little buds and things growing in spring. So what you need to do is collect some things either in your garden or on a daily walk and or you could even draw them actually if you if you're not able to go on a daily walk and you need to uh, draw your name in bubble writing. So one trick to do this, I'm going to write Lima's name. So if you just write the word Lima like that, L E M -er, or write your name as big as the page. So try and make it as big as possible. Do it in pencil first and then you can get a darker pen and go around it. Oops. So if you leave a little gap around the letters, this is one trick to do a bubble writing. So try and do some bubble writing like that. You could always get your adult to help you write the word and then you could fill it in. Then what you need to do is get some glue and just put it in between where the bubbles are. So put it in the letters and then you can get your signs of spring. So your seeds, your plants and stick them on here and make a kind of collage to make it nice and beautiful. Okay, good luck and have fun Thank everybody. Thank you for joining us today in Pajama School. We hope you've had a lovely time learning with us. Love to see you learning on the class blog or on Twitter or Facebook now. So do keep in touch. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, lovely to have you here today and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.